Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Metropolitan Community Church in the Blue Ridge. We're glad you're here today. Glad you're worshiping with us in person or on Facebook Live or maybe later on YouTube. But we're all joined together by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's start our worship service with <clears throat> Guide Me, O Thou Great... Oh, let me do it. Trade my sorrows. I only work here. Trade my sorrows. <laughs> wow. Kelly's going to sing along so we can sing along too. Not Kelly, Sandra is. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. search committee. The applications are still here. Three members. Three members. Three members. Maybe I should just go back and walk in the door again. What do you think? Anyhow, <laughs> three members and it'll be a short congregational meeting because that's all, we've got, that's all we're going to do. If you have not filled out an application and you are a member and would like to be on that roster, there's some applications still available. Please fill one out. It won't take that long. It's not long. We don't ask for your blood type, social security number, or anything. We have Bible study on Tuesday night, and we've been working through the week of Jesus' life, and I think this week we'll be looking at the Last Supper, the foot washing part. So if you're interested in that, go to the last parts of each of the Gospels, and you'll find some about that, except Mark, I don't think, has it. Um, some of you know that our contract finished, our current, our current contract is that time finished on the building at 806. We have had a really good visit from some folks, and there's somebody else coming to look at it this afternoon, just in the space of Saturday, Sunday type thing. So keep that in prayer that the right people <clears throat> with the right amount of money will come by and want to get that. Amen? Amen. I better hear an amen. I especially want to thank those of you who were able to come and help us yesterday. We, we cleaned up. You know, we, have you ever been moving in and out and stuff is a little bit everywhere? Well, everything, a little bit of everything was everywhere. And so we kind of got it straightened up. The sanctuary I've never seen looks so clean. All the plaster has been picked up. I lost some more came down last night. All the plaster has been picked up, and I want to see if I can remember to get everybody. Jeffrey, Catherine, Sue, Kelly, hmm? me, and Rebecca. And, and Michael. And Michael. And Sandra, not Kelly. <laughs> Twice <laughs> Kelly, three times I get to go home and somebody else will do the rest. <laughs> That's why 
they were just correcting me on that. So yes, it was Sandra. <laughs> now you know why I don't want to stay till I'm 71. <clears throat> okay. Any other announcements? You're going to be see a posting on our Facebook pages about the needs for dogs and cats. One of the people who goes to Valley works at or volunteers at the SPCA. And she's given us this list, and anytime you want to get something from this list and bring it, you can just bring it here to church, and she'll be glad to take it on to SPCA. Uh, we have this list, and we're going to be putting it on either our website or our Facebook page. We'll put it everywhere we can put it. And it doesn't mean you have to go and get every one of these things. If you're walking through the store and something's on sale, grab it up. Any other announcements? Okay, now... Let's continue with Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Something that God's done with you, please feel free to share that. Hello, this time? Yes. Okay. Um, I want to share how God saved me four times, even though I rejected Him four times. Uh, a little of my background so you understand where I was coming from. I was an abused child, very abused, and I was abused in the military. Uh, so I have a bad case of PTSD. Uh, the first incident, this is about suicide, so if, you're, if that's a trigger for you, you want to turn, off, turn me off. Uh, the first incident was in Taiwan when I was living there. I'm a diver and I'm fully certified in several areas. Uh, and I decided that I was going to get a tank of air and swim out as far as I can, then come up and drift until I died. Well, I swam out about two miles, and I came up, and lo and behold, there was a Taiwan fishing fleet that I came up right in the middle of. <laughs> I find that a bit funny now, but at the time, I wasn't happy. They kind of blew my plan. 
they brought me aboard, told the dive shop what, where they found me, and the dive shop no longer let me dive alone. Uh, the second attempt was in Australia uh, when I was living there. I downed a, a bunch of pills, in fact all the pills I had I took, and uh, a friend called me from the States, mobile, mobile to mobile, which is pretty expensive. Uh, she just felt that there was a need to call me. And uh, I was slurring my words on that. And uh, she says, have you been drinking? I says, no. She says, what's wrong? I told her. She told me to get my butt to ER and to take a taxi. Well, I didn't take the taxi. I drove, which was pretty stupid. <laughs> and uh, at ER, they uh, pumped my stomach, kept me overnight and had a psychiatrist talk to me and told me that if I didn't go to the psychiatrist locally, they'd report me, uh, which is not a good thing in Australia. Uh, the second attempt, uh, I jumped in front of the train in Sydney uh, within a couple seconds of the train coming, feeling that this time it's going to work. Lo and behold, somebody jumped in behind me knocked me off the track, and we hid, he held me underneath the overhang uh, of the platform until the train had passed. When I got up the ladder and that, he was gone. I fir firmly believe it was an angel. Uh, the uh, last time I tried it, I was driving down the road going from uh, Wayla, uh, which you guys don't know is, uh, to Adelaide for uh, to see a nerve doctor, and I decided I've had it, and I pulled in front of a truck, a double tanker fuel truck, and uh, we were going, we were both going approximately 70 miles an hour. I hit him head on. The, the engine of the car came into the uh, uh, cockpit and was sitting in the driver's, or in the passenger seat. Uh, it took him three hours to cut me out. Uh, all that time there was a medic that was with me. They gave me blood while I was there, about five pints, because I was bleeding so bad. Uh, and they kept telling me everything's going to be okay, and I'm going to have a helicopter ride. So they flew me to uh, the hospital in Adelaide, and uh, there, the doctor told me I'd never walk again. Uh, well, I wasn't happy with that. And I decided that's not going to happen. The Lord saved me from the accident, and he helped me walk with a walker. I didn't like the walker, uh, so I worked at it, and I got to where I can walk with crutches. And then following, I got to the cane. Today, I'm still using the cane most of the time. But the Lord saved me every one of those times. I'm a firm believer in it. And if you have questions about the existence of God, I'm proof he does exist. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. You just need to get out of the Southeast Asia area and Australia and get back to Venice. <laughs> Something happened here. Jeffrey, you want to share about your friend before we get started? Um, yes, the friend I asked for prayer for last week. She had her heart attack on Saturday. Um, she had a double bypass on Wednesday because she had a 99 and an 85% blockage. And she's been sent home today. Uh -huh. And how, well. and how bad were her symptoms when she went to the hospital? She had very mild symptoms of wasn't going to go to the hospital, and somebody was like, well, maybe she should get it checked out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Had she not, she would be dead. So, mm -hmm. take care of yourselves, and ladies, mm -hmm. our symptoms are often different than men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have you say, oh, I went to the yard, it was waste, than not go. I'll tell you the Joanna story another time. <laughs> On our prayer list, as always, we have those who are dealing with, living with COVID, 
even as the numbers go down, there's still people, especially people who are having long-term effects from it now, long-term effects. And so that's a, a concern, too. Also, for Ukraine, I, you know, did, had, did anybody hear President um, Biden's speech yesterday? If you didn't hear it, please can I go back and find it. It was the most enthusiastic, uh, powerful speech I've ever heard him give. And uh, we just need to really pray for the people of Ukraine, for the leadership. I look at all those children, all that, it just, just breaks my heart. Patty's not here with us this morning. She misses us. But the wind and the cold weather all of a sudden have given her some breathing problems. I'm sure you can relate to that. And so we need to keep her in prayer. She hates to miss. Some of you know Becky Snyder, Becky Snyder Smith. She was on our softball team 100 years ago. She uh, texted me this morning and told me that her mother had fallen Friday and broken her hip. They had surgery on Saturday, and now she's going to be heading eventually to rehab. And as prayers for herself and her mother as they go into a new chapter of life. Kathy had praises and prayers for Sharon, her friend Sharon that we've talked about so often. She had a real close call and she's doing much better. For her friend Elizabeth to be less lonely. For families and individuals who are struggling to survive. And then lastly, praises this camping fool didn't freeze or get stuck in the mud this week. Travel prayer, she's coming home tonight. Pat had praises for friends and family, prayers for this world, and for MCCBR. Greg Leonard, who's one of my favorite guys at the North Carolina Church, asked prayers for world peace. Liz asked prayers for her friend uh, Susan, who starts chemotherapy tomorrow. And <clears throat> my friend Laura asked prayers for their friend Chris, the woman who lost her partner a few months ago. She's having much more trouble with anxiety and with new phobias popping up. And also prayers, also prayers for this woman to be healed and be able to move forward. I think that's all I have on my list. Who has a prayer request or praise they didn't get down? Yes, Rhonda. Um, travel prayers for Lori while she's away. Yeah. She's going to be gone about a week. Spending time with her son and daughter and all to be. Can I see another hand? Yes. Prayers for uh, one of my mom's good friends and family, and he was a friend of mine, Buddy Cruz family. Buddy passed away two days ago. Um, he went to be with a father. His daughter Tina and Tanya, or Tanya are going to need some prayers along with a friend. Prayers for this grieving family. Yes, ma'am. I have praises for all the beautiful children I'm encountering. I just feel like God's opened the heavens and just dropped all kinds of babies. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I thoroughly enjoyed yesterday, and we're getting to get to see another new baby today. A friend of Jamie's. And then there's also a couple more on the way later of people that we know. So it's like when you said she'd have babies around her 24 7 if she could. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, or when pets. I, when I saw that picture about the, uh, the babies, I thought. Maybe she should give up cutting hair and start a daycare. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> I don't have the strength. I have the mind, but not the strength. It's a better way to handle that. Liz? Uh, a prayer for my friend Bernard. He's had a very rough time with a very, very good friend who's succumbed to uh, drug abuse. And it's cost him a lot in his personal well-being. Mm -hmm. He had people over for just to get together, very casual, and it really made a difference. He's keeping Bernard in his prayers. He's a good man who helps a lot of people. Sure. Mark? Uh, prayers for my uh, spouse, uh, Randall Stevens, who died uh, about four months ago after we were together for 56 years. Mm -hmm. 56 years. Some of you aren't even 56 years old. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they had a wonderful relationship and a lot of fun and teasing and back and forth. Thanks for that. Anyone else? Any other? Yes. For, for an aunt that uh, she, was a lot, she was having a lot of pain and issues and it's not turning out to be good. And she has cancer and still waiting to hear what they can do or if they can't do. Anything. <clears throat> yeah. Very true of aunt. Any unspoken? You're thinking, boy, this is taking up a lot of time today. It is, but you know what? It's important time. It's important time. 
Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you today for all your many blessings. We never can thank you enough. We never could remember to say over and over and over how gracious you are to us. And even in the midst of our sorrows, even in the midst of our troubles, you are still present with us. And there are things that remind us and upset us, but you are still present with us. I ask that you be with each of the situations mentioned here, people that are grieving, people that are sick, people that are just having rough times, for all the people of Ukraine, for people who are still de dealing with active COVID and after effects of COVID, and especially for our health care workers who carry so much of that trauma within their spirits. But I thank you for babies. And I thank you for testimonies of how you've been present even when we didn't want you present. And I thank you that you're moving forward helping this church to continue being the lighthouse that it is to so many. Give us your understanding. Give us your timetable. And help us be willing to trust you in it. In your name we pray. Amen. Um, I'm sorry, I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. Um, thank you so much, Paula, for, um, for your testimony. And um, I'm just thinking about how Jesus said where two or three are gathered in my name, I'm there. And I can feel it this morning. So, um, so uh, we've come to the time in our service where we uh, collect the offering. Um, so I just ask as the plate comes around um, to give as you're able. Um, and if you don't have anything physical to put in the plate, by all means, please touch it. And um, please, um, I guess, just follow uh, what the Spirit uh, leads you to give. Also, if you don't um, have anything to give today, but you want to give via PayPal or um, send to our address, you can do that as well. So, thank you.
live. And now it's the reading of the word. <clears throat> and now the reading of the word from the Message Bible. Joshua 5, 9 through 12. God said to Joshua, Today I have rolled away the reproach of Egypt. That's why the place is called the Gilgal. It's still called that. The people of Israel continued to camp at the Gilgal. They celebrated the Passover on the evening of the 14th day of the month on the plains of Jericho. Right away, the day after the Passover, they started eating the produce of that country, unraised bread and roasted grain. And then, no more manna. The manna stopped. As soon as they started eating food grown in the land, there was no more manna for the people of Israel. That year they ate from the crops of Canaan. <clears throat> As I was preparing the sermon today, I was thinking about a young preacher that I went to hear one time, not that long ago, and, and when they were finished, they asked me what I thought. Don't ask me what I think if you don't want to know. <laughs> and the only criticism I had was that they were teaching something from Isaiah, but they took us through 500,000 years of history to get us to that point. But this is one of the stories where if you don't know the background, it doesn't make near as much sense or have near as much impact. So I'm going to give you the history up to this in probably 30 seconds or less. You know, they left the children of God, left Israel, headed to the Promised Land. Right? You with me? Remember? Okay. That was a distance of 5,271 miles. And it could be walked in 11 days. You remember how many years it took them to get there? Forty. Forty years. Forty years. I'm a slow walker, but I still don't think it would have taken me 40 years. And when they took off, you know, the, the fair, they went through the Red Sea, and God promised them a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And when that moved, they moved. When that didn't move, they didn't move. And so they had left Egypt. And they packed as much, you've seen the Ten Commandments movie, it's pretty accurate on that part. They packed up everything they could bring and take with them. But eventually that ran out. And that's when they started complaining. Moses, why did you take us from Egypt? We could have had leeks, and we could have had onions, we could have had cucumbers. And you would have still been slaves. But they didn't remember that. And so they complained and complained, and finally God heard them, and God sent quail and manna. I think we talked not long ago about what manna might be, so we're not going to go back through that. Um, and every morning, there would be quail fall out of the sky, no shooting, and there would be crystal-like stuff that was called manna. And that was provided for them for a good bit of the 40 years. Now, the good thing is they had food. The not good thing is they had quail and manna for almost 40 years. But it kept them going. It kept them moving forward. And they, you know, they still had these problems. Moses came down with the Ten Commandments. And when he got down, do you remember what he found? They were all worshiping this golden calf, which was totally against their laws. And they were dancing and frolicking. That's why Baptists think he still can't dance. But anyhow. They were doing all this stuff, and Moses threw the tablets down, but you know God was gracious, because God said, come on back, we'll do this again, and gave a second set of the Ten Commandments. Hang on, I'm getting there. They continued to have this rebellion over and over and over, and just before the account we read today, they actually did a census, and what started out as being, you know, a good crowd of people, by that time it had grown to two million people. Can you picture two million people traveling through can you imagine how long it took them if the first person started here, by the time they got to the door back there, it might be another day or another part of a day. Move on, Catherine, move on. And so all of a sudden, it seems, that 
they were led into the promised land. And they started seeing, they'd been out in the desert, remember, and they got into this lush country where they started seeing plants and vegetables, all kinds of things. Now, my thought was, many of these people, almost none of these people had left Egypt where they had their cucumbers and leeks and onions. Now they're seeing all this food. Don't you wonder if they wondered what it was? Have you ever walked in a market and thought, what is this? I had a, a vine in my yard in California and had these, these squash type things because they had little bumpies on the middle like this. And I thought, what is that? And it was crumquash, something like that. And uh, then there was this other thing. And it was just like a, it looked like a potato until you tried to cook it. And I don't remember the name of it. It was hard as a brick. Hickama, it was hickama. And so I'm sure they were just overwhelmed with, now I'm also sure that morning they woke up, they went out and no quail, no manna. What would you think if that had been provided for you every day and all of a sudden there's no food? There's no food. <clears throat> the night before that, they had for the first time in those 40 years, shared in Passover. The time they'd been moving through the desert, they never celebrated Passover. And I never realized that till this week. They'd never celebrated Passover. And what's even more interesting is in those 40 years, any young male born had not been circumcised. So when they got to the promised land, it's not in this scripture, the first thing they had to do was circumcise all the men. So they then, yeah, so they then could have Passover. You couldn't participate in Passover if you were a man, if you weren't circumcised. So they have Passover. The men are all, one of the scriptures says, they were shaken off of the stink of Egypt. They had come into a whole new country. No manna. And then they started eating the food grown in the land. No more manna. No more manna. Not only would they be wondering what it is, but they had to figure out how to cook it. Grandma wasn't still with them. Grandma, who cooked this stuff in Egypt, had died. And daughter hadn't been able to learn a whole lot because she'd been living in dirt and manna and quail. I'm getting disgusted with it, just talking about it. So they had to figure out what they were going to do with this. But the important thing is God never abandoned them. In that 40 years, giving them all that quail and all that manna, God never failed. God never said, I'm sleepy this day. I'm not going to do that today. Or, you know, the quail aren't very plentiful this day. Just, you know, get over it. God was faithful every day to them with that. And then, instead of leaving them in the desert with no food, he had brought them into the land flowing with milk and honey. The land where they could go over and pick something off a tree. This is just really boggling my mind this week. How would they know to go pick that apple and eat it? He said, well, that's, we can't go back to understanding their mentality after all that time. He said, what has this got to do with anything, Catherine? But you know, they had to learn step by step how to do these things. They had to be told how to do these things. If you were growing up, you may remember when you learned to ride a bike. And some of you were probably really adept and you just hopped on that thing and took off. I had my mama hold on to the back of that seat for a long time before I was willing to take off. But I had that support, and that's how I could do it. Do you remember learning to tie your shoes? I don't, but I remember my sister tying them, and she, what a mess. What a mess. But as long as one of us were there saying, over this way, through this way, tighten it up, because she had that support all that time. Maybe you needed some little cheater things in math. I had a student one time who, who had a math uh, times table. He just couldn't get it. So he had one like tucked under his paper all the time. He'd slide it over and see what it was. He had that support and that wasn't the best. We need and need to tap into the support God gives us. Many of us have felt very alone. Very alone. But as long as we knew we had one person, like the one person that called Paula that day, the one person that may have spoken to you at a particular time. And they may not have even known what you were going through. And if there's not that person, we've always had that assurance, if we choose to accept it, of God being present with us every day and in every situation. They needed to get ready. They needed to get strong. 
They took, yeah, they were been walking, but they hadn't been doing as much except tearing down everything and rebuilding it as they went. But they were getting ready to go in and conquer the land of Canaan. You couldn't do that on quail and man. God had to give them a better diet, better food to get them going. And God often leads us. And we eventually realize God's leading us in the right place. Now, thank goodness God is not a GPS. Because sometimes you can put your address in that, and it will lead you to a dead end. Anybody ever done that with a GPS? Oh, yeah. Or uh, it leads you somewhere. You, we were doing some over time. It's like, where are we? But God's not a faulty GPS by any means. God knew where God was leading them. God knew when they would be ready to be present there. Now, a lot of this involved their trust. The more you learn to trust God's deliverance, the more you learn to trust God's guidance, the more you learn that God's going to be present with you, that builds your trust, yes? And that's why it's important that we share prayers and praises sometimes. So it may not be, I used to say, I think God's on vacation for my personal life. But we hear that God is at work in other people's lives. There comes a time when we have to cut the cord and get rid of the quail and manna. Some of you still want quail and manna. You don't really want to read the Bible yourself. You don't want to say, listen to Bible study. Heaven will tell us on Sunday if it's important. And I try to, but you know what? There's so much more that I could ever begin to tell you. That I could ever begin to teach you. I could ever begin to show you. And God is saying, come on, I've got the right road map. Come on, I know where I'm taking you. Come on, let's go. So if the manna runs out, if the quail stop dropping out of the sky, if your spoon feeding dries up, then you have the tool. And even better than the tool, you have the greatest teacher. You have the greatest leader. You have the greatest one of God who will catch you where you are and take you to somewhere better. The only thing that blocks that, blocks that is when you put your foot down, when you sit down and say, I'm not trying anymore. I'm not trying anymore. And God will still come around and be present with you. But when we say, I'm not trying anymore. I believe God's disappointed and you will be disappointed. So be careful if you think your manna and your quail are running out. Because there's something better. Learn how to eat it. Learn how to find it. Learn how to use it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Jesus met his disciples at this last supper you know something was about to run out on them Jesus was going to be crucified the Jesus they had walked beside they had eaten with all that that was going to be ending and over the years many ways have been used to show and re reassemble this meal we are blessed to have little individual cups and when you're finished, hang on because Jeffrey will come by and gather, gather up your empties. But they were about to lose their quail and manna. And Jesus in the Gospel of John spends a long time teaching and working with them prior to this meal. But it finally comes time for the meal. <clears throat> Jesus doesn't do something new, unusual, obtuse. He takes the bread from their own Passover table. He lifts it to heaven. He gives thanks for it. He blesses it as he breaks it. And he says, this is my body, broken for you. Take and eat of it, each of you. And when you do, remember me. In the same manner, again, from their very own Passover table, Jesus took a cup. He lifted it to heaven. He gave thanks for it. He blessed it. And he said, this is my blood, poured out for you as a sign of a new and everlasting covenant. Take and drink of it, each of you. And when you do this, remember me. I won't be standing there with you. I won't be standing there waiting to go to dinner with you. I won't be there praying with you, but remember me, because I will be with you. And we are assured of that when we say that Christ has died, Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen, and Christ, Christ is, is coming again. again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Christ's body broken, that we might be filled. The love of God poured out in all our hearts. Loving God, remind us this week that you are with us, you are closer than our own skin, and you will be with us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.